What's up guys? Welcome back to Flipping the Script Fishing. Now we're doing something a little bit different today. We're out here on the lake. It's a bit chilly this morning, to be honest. Hopefully it'll warm up here a little bit, but we're gonna catch some big catfish. I'm here with uh, Dave Schultz. He's gonna show me how to catch these big old catfish. So we got some big skipjack we're cutting up and uh, hopefully we'll catch some real big ones and uh, have something good to show you. All right, stay tuned. Dave is no stranger to catching big fish. I mean, just look at these big flatheads, blue cats. He's caught everything from bass to crappie to catfish, and they're all big. He's obviously got it down to the science, so I reached out to him to see if he'd be willing to teach me how to catch some of these big fish, and he was more than willing. So now I get to show you what he's shown me and shown so many other people. So if you like to catch big fish and like to see other people catch big fish, Stay tuned, you'll learn a bunch. So the first thing is Dave had me meet him at what he referred to as a choke point. Now I've referred to him as pinch points in past videos. This one, this particular one is at a bridge point where there's lots of riprap and deep water close by. But what it is is a place where fish have to move through and are concentrated in large quantities. Bait fish and also big fish following them. We then baited our hooks with pieces of skipjack. What we did was cut the skipjack from the back to the belly in inch pieces. This seems to be a favorite food of large catfish. bigger than that one, but that's at least get the skunk out of them. Once you find these prime spots, spots with deep water where you know there's some big fish, then it becomes a waiting game. So to up our possibilities and our chances, we put out a handful of rods a piece. And that way, eventually, the scent of the skipjack should draw in some big fish. We then propped up the rods and gave the line just a little bit of slack so we could see a bite and it would show the rod moving but wouldn't bow it over immediately. And I'll show you exactly how to rig those up here in just a minute. I noticed the family keeping fish that they were catching, so this size is a perfect eating size, so I offered it to them. All right, guys, let me show you what I was fishing here. Um, this is actually a saltwater rod, a surf rod that I bought when I was out in Outer Banks. Um, it's a game fish, let's see here, high-tech game fish. It's, it's 11 foot medium heavy action rod. So 
and I got it paired up with a big um, spinning reel. And it's uh, endurance. It's to be honest with you, it's really cheap. Um, I'd like to upgrade this to actual quality. I think this is uh, an Okuma endurance. I, don't, I hate to say it's cheap because it's it's just it's old and I haven't used it, so it's kind of gotten you know wore out. But anyway. This is the, the one that I caught that big catfish on, uh, which really handled it well. And I probably could have caught much bigger fish and handled them pretty easily. Um, I know that um, Dave was fishing with these quite a bit. The Berkeley Big Game Series, these things. This is my uh, casting rod. Now, let's see. This one is 7.6 medium casting rod. Now, I took my reel off of here because I noticed just at the last second I had an eye that was damaged, so I didn't want to break my line while I was trying to pull a big catfish in. Um, so I'm going to repair that, um, and then I'll it'll be fine. I'll put a reel in there, and that will be just fine. That's what he used. Um, he used a spinning rod, um, and, and they worked fine. The reel that I had on that was an old pen bait casting rod. Okay, these are low gear ratio, but they got a lot of strength to them. Uh, this one also has a clicker on it, uh, so that way I could, you know, I didn't really use it, but I could have. But anyway, it's, it's uh, just a bait casting, uh, old, slow gear ratio, good power. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I caught one fish with it, and it, it did just fine. That's what I typically had on that big game rod. But uh, last minute, I just took it off, and I put it on my punching a punching rod that I had, which is also a 7.6 uh, heavy action. And and this did just fine. So um, that's an, uh, also an option for you. All right, well, let me show you how he showed me to rig these up. Um, it's really simple and obviously very effective. Okay, so the line that I was using was actually this big game um, line it's a it's a monofilament this is 20 pound test line and it did really well i believe it's this is trilene it did really well handled it uh you know i, I obviously if you're going to be targeting a big fish you need to set that drag that catfish i caught was probably you know 40 or 50 pounds and uh you know i just set the drag right and and 20 pound test line held it fine that's uh David likes to use 50 pound test monofilament and obviously he does it a lot and that's what works for him. So I would go with that. And if, if that, if you feel like that's overkill, by all means, you can go lower than that. Um, and, uh, it should work fine. Just set your drag right. Now the way he did this is very simple. He would do one of two things. He either put, uh, here's half, these are half ounce egg sinkers. Okay. <clears throat> All right, so he would take two of those. You either take one or two of them. In fact, we had one that was rigged up with one egg sinker, and then we had another one, uh, the one that with the big surf rod that cast it way out. Uh, that was rigged up with two egg sinkers, so that's an ounce of of uh, lead. So you just take them, thread them on. One, two. All right, then he would go up about, he'd take a plastic bead, okay? He'd thread the plastic bead on, and he'd go up a couple feet from the end of the line, okay? And then all he'd do is go uh, back and make an overhand knot on his main line, okay? So he'd just do that twice. And that would keep that pegged, okay? So then these sinkers, they get stuck on that. And that that, that worked just fine. Obviously, you saw me catch that big one, and he catches lots of big ones, and works just fine, apparently. And then he would take a big circle hook, or like a J hook, okay? Here's a, a big one. These are heavy-duty hooks, so they're not going to bend out, okay? 
Uh, this is actually one that I had. It was a salt water. But it'll get an 8 aught, or he, he even likes to go 10 aught sometimes, these big circle hooks and the big J hooks, okay? And with those, you can just do your favorite uh, uh, knot on there, and that should work fine. A Palomar knot, or I like to do double trialing knots. Clip that tag in off there. And there you have it. Okay, so you got your sinkers and your bead, and then you got a little leader, and you got your um, your piece of skipjack. Okay. He also liked to do uh, weightless, and he the one that he was holding most of the time was weightless. Uh, he would throw that out there and just let the current or the wind take it and just drift it along. And he said he's had he has a lot of luck with those. Um, I rigged up one that I caught one on, and I had this one weightless, but it's a little tandem rig. What I did with this one, you could do similarly, uh, except you tie on a swivel, and then you can tie on a piece. This one I just had slipping so that it could it could uh, float up, and I actually caught one on this. It's a bit smaller hook. I think this is a 6 odd or a, uh, may even be a 4 odd. But it's a circle hook. And then I had my big one on here. And I just had, uh, this is actually a saltwater rig that I put on there. And this, this just slides free on that main line. Come down to the swivel. And uh, then I have, you know, a short leader to that big hook. And that did really well as, as well. So I caught a little one on that. I uh, had several bites on it. Um... It seemed like the the little the smaller fish were eating the weightless, um, and the bigger ones that day wanted wanted the um, wanted it on the bottom. I caught two with the one with two sinkers on it that day. Uh, so you just want to try those out. Um, try one with a heavy or uh, two sinkers on it, one one without, and one with just one sinker on it, and you can usually figure out what they're eating, what they're uh, keen on better and what's holding its place better it depends on the current that you got you may have to go up and wait but those rigs uh, worked out really well for us now let's get back to the fishing action As a bass angler, I've gotten accustomed to setting the hook after I get a bite. But when you're using circle hooks, you don't want to set the hook. It's not designed that way in order to get the hook in the fish. You just kind of have to lean into the fish and let the hook do the job. You don't need to set it. And I kept making that mistake. Oh, yeah. Woo! Oh yeah. That's what I'm talking about. Ain't no better way to do it. Oh yeah, that's a good one. I'll tell you what, them circles don't look very neat. Oh yeah.
There's a nice blue right there. Look how fat this thing is. That's a big one. You hear him? He talking to you. Let's get a measurement on it. Right at 32 inches. Okay, let's, let's release it. Ready? Oh, very good. <laughs> All right, that's what we're here for. Took a little while, but we got one. Hopefully, we can get another one.
Check out that catfish. That's a big one right there. All right. That's what I'm talking about. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> uh, thank you, David. Awesome deal. That's the man right there. Put me on some big old catfish. All right. Let's see if we can get another one before dark. As you can see, we're using a pretty good chunk of meat here. It was a big enough chunk to set off enough scent to have drawn those big ones and then entice them to eat it. And like you saw, once you hang into a big one, you need to pull in all those other fishing rods so you don't get tangled up. Now, after we caught the fish and released it, then we went ahead and we set all the rods back out there in order to entice another big bite, hopefully. We had several instances of smaller fish sampling the bait that we put out, but they were unable to take it. We would just get little bites and then it would be done. The bigger ones, according to Dave, would orient the bait in their mouth in order to then eat it. So he would advise to let out some line so that they could easily take it and then run with it 
and set the hook themselves, just like you saw with those first two big ones that we caught. And it seemed to work pretty well. I, on the other hand, was hyped about catching that big one and got a little bit trigger happy in trying to set the hook and get another one to the bank. Of course, when you're working with bait like cut shad, periodically you need to check your uh, offering to see if it's still there and hasn't been picked off the hook. So we go through and we check it every 20 minutes to half hour to make sure the chunk was still there and replace it if need be. Unfortunately, Dave and Dylan had to call it a day, so they packed up their stuff and they headed out. I decided to try and keep fishing until the sun went down, and just to try to catch one more big fish. Hey, you be safe down here, buddy. Uh, appreciate you guys. I really need to take this opportunity to thank Dave for everything he showed me. It's definitely something that I could take out and feel confident that I could catch some big, big fish like this again. He was very willing to show me everything he knew to try to help me catch some big fish. And he was just good company. We had a good time talking and obviously a good time catching fish. In my opinion, this is what fishing is all about. Not only the excitement of catching fish and enjoying God's creation, but also getting to know each other and sharing what we've learned and helping each other be successful out of the water. And like happens often, the good Lord blessed me with an amazing sunset and you get to enjoy it right here on camera. I had several other bites, but unfortunately I was unable to hook up. But this sunset was definitely a good consolation prize. Sunset can't get much better than that. Alright. Till next time guys. Tight line.